And because Lamar has developed as a passer and now is a way better understanding of the offense, even with the departures that they've had, he's going to elevate the play of everybody around him. But a big time defense with Lamar Jackson, with Zay Flowers, which offensive coordinator that you've got. Now you get Derrick Henry in the backfield to give the ball to. They don't have to rely on Lamar Jackson to figure out how to get the first down. All you got to do is turn around, hand the football to that big old uh, diesel and let him just plow his way forward. You know, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the Baltimore Ravens at this point because this team, man, really has started to put together a great offseason so far, and it only looks like they're going to get better from here. They've made crazy good additions to the offense that I think is going to make them even better than they were last year, which is kind of crazy to say. And on top of that, even though they lost some players on defense, I think the people they added in their place could make them at minimum the same, if not even better on this side of the ball as well, which should give this team another chance to go all the way to the Super Bowl just like they almost did last year. But before we get into why I exactly believe that, if you like Baltimore Ravens content just like this, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Ravens videos for the remainder of this offseason. Okay, so to get back on topic with the Baltimore Ravens, this team, of course, like I just mentioned, is coming off a season where they almost went to the Super Bowl, but they fell short in the NFC Championship game to the Kansas City Chiefs, barely, mainly due to them not coming out and playing to the level we all know they can. They made a few mistakes that hurt them that didn't allow them to win the football game, even though I thought they were going to come back at the end, but obviously there's nothing the Ravens can do about that now, so after that game, they needed to shift their full focus to the offseason to get better so that didn't happen again in the upcoming season. Season, and I do think they made some additions to help prevent that. The first addition comes on the offense, and I think you could argue this was the biggest addition for any team in the entire NFL, and you probably know what I'm talking about because it was the addition of Derrick Henry, one of the best running backs of all time. The Ravens are known as a team that runs the football really well, and that's mainly been because of Lamar Jackson and the stress that he puts on the defense because you can never focus fully on the running back because you never know if Lamar Jackson might pull it and run himself, and that's allowed this team to be extremely versatile and what they do in the run game, which has made them a top three to five rushing attack for the last couple of years. But what's so crazy about that is that they've been able to do this without having the greatest running back rooms ever. So adding Derrick Henry is going to be the first time you have an elite running back in your backfield, and it really could change everything for this team. Derrick Henry, as we all know him, is like I said, one of the best running backs of all time. And even though he's starting to get older, he still is putting up great production after great production year in and year out. And I think his production is going to get easier even better on the Ravens because he's coming from a Tennessee Titans team where he had to carry the load and he didn't have any help at all. He was running behind a terrible offensive line and still put up great numbers, so I really can't imagine what he's going to be able to do behind this Baltimore Ravens offensive line, especially since the defense has to worry about Lamar Jackson as well. If I had to bet on a team to have the number one rushing attack in the league, it would easily be the Baltimore Ravens, especially when you consider you're going to be getting Keaton Mitchell back from his injury, and we all saw the flashes that he showed us last year in his rookie season. Keaton Mitchell is a guy that went under the radar as an undrafted free agent, but he started getting more and more snaps down the stretch, and he was just a burst of explosiveness when he got on the field, and he had big play after big play, and he is the perfect type of running back to pair with a guy like Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is a guy that's going to get the majority of the touches, and then Keaton Mitchell is the guy that's going to get five to ten carries a game, and he's going to give you those big chunk plays. This is shown by the fact that he averaged 8.4 yards per carry last year, which is absolutely insane and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it's even higher than that next year considering Derrick Henry's an even better number one back. I honestly do think that if the Ravens wanted to, they could run the ball almost every play and still score a lot of points. But what's so great about this offense is that you don't just have to run the ball. You can also throw the ball at a high level because we've seen Lamar Jackson get better and better as a passer every year he's been in the league and I only expect that trend to continue. Last season, we saw Todd Munkin come in and bring a new style of offense to Baltimore and that offense included throwing the ball a lot more and we saw Lamar Jackson thrive in that offense and it made it a lot harder for defenses to adjust and to stop the Ravens as a whole. You never knew if they were going to run the ball or throw the ball, and you had to be ready for both because they could do either one at a high level, and I think we're going to see that trend stay the same, if not get even better. At the receiver position, you of course have that guy Zay Flowers, who played extremely well for you in his first year as a rookie, and I only expect him to continue to get better. And then to go along with him, you have a whole plethora of guys that are going to contribute, and that starts with Rashad Bateman, and then moves on to guys like Devontae Walker, who you drafted this year, Deion 
Javante Hardy, who you added this offseason in free agency. And you can even add in the question mark of Malik Cunningham moving over to receiver because he might be a little bit better than people expect. So while your receiver room doesn't have any crazy high-end talent, they are deep and they're all versatile players that you can use in a lot of different ways. And when you have Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely at the tight end position, you don't need too many great receivers because those tight ends are both elite receiving threats that can carry the load somewhat. And I think when you put all of those weapons together, the Ravens have plenty to work with. I would easily bet that this Ravens offense ends as a top five unit in the NFL. And if this offense is a top five unit paired with what this defense is going to be, this team is going to be extremely worrisome to play against. When it comes to the defense, you did lose a few players. Most importantly, Patrick Queen to the linebacker room. But you also added players, not only in free agency, but also through the draft that made you better. So I think it kind of evens out, if not makes this defense a little bit better. When it comes to the defensive line, one of the most important things you did this offseason was re-signing Justin Marubike, who was coming off an absolutely outstanding season as an interior defensive lineman, who I only expect to keep the same production going. You never see interior guys get as many sacks as he has. So to have a guy like that is a superpower to pair with everything else you have on this defensive line. You, of course, signed back Kyle Van Noy, which was a great veteran re-signing. You still have Odafe Owe, who has a ton of potential. You still have Michael Pierce, who is an extremely good player. You still have David Ajabu, who has a ton of potential. And you went out in the draft and got a guy in Adisa Isaac, who I'm extremely confident in. I think Adisa Isaac could be a lot better right off the bat than people realize. And if he is, this defensive line is going to get after the passer at an extremely, extremely high level and it's going to make opposing offenses have a really hard life. Now, to go along with this defensive line, behind them, you have a linebacker room that did lose Patrick Queen, like I mentioned earlier, but you have the perfect guy to take his spot that you drafted in last year's draft in Trenton Simpson, who I expect to step up and play at a really high level. I thought the Ravens got an absolute steal in the 2023 draft when they were able to get this guy in the third round, and I think he's going to show why he was a steal this year to pair with what you still have in Roquan Smith. Roquan is the perfect guy you want teaching a young guy because he is one of the smartest linebackers in the game and I expect him to lead this linebacker room in the right way and then I really do think that Trenton Simpson is going to be a great number two to pair with him. This should help make out one of the better front sevens overall in the league if not the best front seven overall in the league and when you pair with that that you also went out and added more to your secondary that was already good that's when this defense really starts to come together. Obviously you already had Marlon Humphrey who is obviously a bit injury prone but when he's on the field he's an elite corner and he's one of the best corners in the league. You already had Brandon Stevens who played really good for you last year and you still have Arthur Mallett who played really good for you last year but most importantly you went out in the draft and got another absolute steal in the first round by being able to take that guy Nate Wiggins at the 30th overall pick. There is no way in hell this guy should have been there that late with all the athleticism he brings to the table and with everything he showed on his tape because this guy looks to me like he's going to come in and be elite right away. He is a bit on the smaller side and he's not the greatest tackler but that's about as far as his weaknesses go. He is good at everything else and you're not asking a corner to tackle well. You ask a corner to cover well and he can do that all day long. He's going to come in and help make this secondary elite, and I really am confident that they will be elite considering you have one of, if not the very best safety in football, and Kyle Hamilton on the back end, and you're still going to have Marcus Williams even though you lost Geno Stone. So if this defense is elite like we all expect it to be, paired with an offense that I think is going to be even better than they were last year, this team as a whole, like I said at the beginning of the video, is going to be a true contender, and they're going to be extremely scary to play against.